here with Scrap and Abby, and I am here with a really fun video to share with all of you today. Evelyn over at Crafty Come Lately had agreed to do a junk journal swap with me, and um, hi Evelyn, and I have been a long time follower of her YouTube channel, even before I subscribed to her to be honest with you, because I'd be looking like for junk journals and different kind of um, ephemera things, and her videos would kind of pop up in my suggested feed, so I'm like, why am I not subscribing to her? So um, I um, finally got the nerve up to ask her, contact her, and ask her if she would want to do a junk journal swap with me. Um, to me, she is like one one of the top queens for junk journaling. She does a really good job of showing you all different types of journals that she's made, the materials she's used, and then why she's used them, how to assemble them, things of that nature. And I've just, I'm, I really enjoy her channel. So Evelyn, thank you so much for agreeing to do a, um, junk journal swap with me and her youtube channel again is crafty come lately and of course i will put it in the description below so you guys can or excuse me so you ladies can go over and check out her channel because she's just really a really awesome crafter and the reason i'm doing this video is not to be like oh hey look what i sent her that is not what i'm about and i hope you ladies know that i'm doing this as kind of a response to adrian over at pretty pistol 814 and a few other youtubers who have reached out and said hey you know what do you do with a junk journal or like when i've done haul videos and i've mentioned I was going to use this stuff for a junk journal or etc etc so I just watched um, Adrian's recent video this morning actually where she had um, received a junk journal from a result of I think it was a secret wish or some kind of a some kind of a gift thing or something and she was asking at the end of her video what kind of things can I put into a junk journal tips tricks things like that so Adrian this is kind of my response to you is this video just to kind of show you my style and kind of my theming for the junk journals and I really believe this is a lot of um the, calling the same vein of what Crafty Come Lately likes to use as well so that's why I'm doing this, just to kind of give Adrian and all the other uh, viewers out there who might have questions as to what do you put in a junk journal. Now clearly you can do shabby shaky looking or you can do bright, you know, um, colors if you want. This is kind of the tones that I like. I like the, you know, kind of the grungy, dirty, vintagey, you know, ripped pages, stained stuff, that kind of thing. That's what this theme is going to be about. So just so you kind of know, this is kind of my vibe and kind of the vibe you're going to see most of... Um, my, most of the junk journal videos that are channels that I watch anyway, but of course it's all up to imp interpretation. You can do whatever you want to do so that there are no rules. So let me just kind of get started. So my first, <laughs> my first dilemma is that I've been, you know, collecting things for over the past few weeks and even things from my own stash of things that I've, you know, picked up for myself to put in this box for her. And this is the box I'm going to mail it in. And clearly it's full as well as this basket of stuff. But I'm going to um, make it work. I'm going to stick it all in here if I have to. I'll make it work, I promise. Because I wanted to make sure I sent her a really good variety of things. Because that's just, I wanted her to have a lot of things to pull from. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started. So um, I put tags on everything so she would know what they are. But I'm just going to verbally tell you. And I won't spend a lot of time because this video isn't too super long. But these are just some kind of bits of ephemera. Now you can clearly use new items, which these are. You'll recognize this is from Tim Holtz. This is his film strip media. These are just some, these are supposed to be mimicking the old Kodak uh, photo projector slides, but these are new. They have a little bit of um, adhesive on the back that you can use and close and make it like a tab for page cover, something like that. So that's what these are. And I just used some little clothespins that I got from the Dollar Tree. And the reason I stuck with neutral is because that way she could um, ink them, paint them, however she wanted to. So this is just a little bit. Of, these are some Uncle Wiggly cards for my game as little kids. So I gave her just a few of them because I do want to keep you know, most of them for myself because I have a project I'm working on. But I wanted to share a little bit. So these are just some little bits of ephemera that you can, you know, alter and use as a tag or whatever kind of a purpose you want. Here is a stack of some new tags that are supposed to look old. Um, you know, that kind of a look. These are really cool. These feel like a, these almost like a fabric. And then these are like seven gypsies and these are some crafts, you know, the um, just from Staples. And this is just like a large craft tag from Ranger. So there's that. My daughter just got home, so you might hear my little dots and barking if you hear any noise. So I apologize for that. This here is just a bit of some unwashed muslin. And the reason I wrote unwashed on there is because that's how the packaging was when it, um, it came to me. So I cut off a bit of this so I can share this with her. This is great to use as a cover. You can stain this, you know, tea stain it, ink it, stamp on it, make it the cover. You can make it a page, a signature 
the possibilities are endless. Cut it out, make a tag, anything you can think of. You could even write on this. So that's what this is, just a little bit of material for that. And then here is a stack of a mix of some old and new envelopes. And what I mean by old, some of these are like yellowed on the edges. And I know that Crafty Ken Lately really likes to, I'm saying her name, her YouTube channel a lot because I really want to drive it into you guys to go check her out. <laughs> so um, it has like a little bit of like a yellowed kind of burnt edges or like, you know, darker edges from just exposure. These are like from an estate sale along with a mix of some new envelopes and then here's some larger ones that are also old that I've picked up mostly well actually all from Oregon where I just left so these are some um, book these are from like garage sales estate sales just all kinds of places where I take the innards out and then I use the pages for other projects so I wanted to include a few of these different book covers for her she she could obviously use them as covers haha -ha, is what I wrote on there um, to use for her um, different types of junk journals that she wants to do or she could take these apart and just use a panel inside of the journal whatever she wanted so I just put three of those together for her these are some of the jumbo clips and I wanted to include these I was thinking about making my uh, my own tassels on here for her but I wanted to let her have the freedom to do that if she wants to I thought these would be great to use as kind of a large uh, obviously binder clip for her junk journal so she can alter those if she chooses to. These are some little bits of papers that I've purchased um, from different paper stacks, DCWV, Hobby Lobby, that kind of thing. Just cut them down. There are a lot of them are those little um, bits, you know, they have like different scenes, little cut aparts. And these are some little clothespins that I altered. Um, these are from Target Dollar Spot. And these are just some little flowers and whatnots that I added. And I'll um, put a card across here for the um, Dollar Tree, how you can dress up your Dollar Tree embellishments, even though these are Target Dollar Spot, still the same price point. Same idea. And I'm trying to hurry. Sorry, guys, if I'm talking too fast. I don't make this too super long. These are some actual true vintage bits of ephemera and like not things to make them look old, but they really are old. So um, I'm trying to be careful so I don't tear this, uh, these two red doilies, but I have these two vintage red doilies. There's some library cards that are from like the 40s and 50s from the school, high school I used to actually go to when I was growing up. And then some bingo cards, a little glassine sack. Um, you know, just some little packaging from buttons. These are some old cards from an office I picked up from an industrial sale. Little bits of um, Filofax paper, which isn't really old, but this is like from, this was like from the 80s, I think, from a Filofax I picked up. So kind of older, I guess. So she could use those in any way she wants in her journals. And these are some of the innards from the book covers, but also from some different ones. This little bit of, um, I love this, listen to this. Oh, I love this. I wanted this for myself, but this came in one of the books that I picked up specifically for her. So I'm not going to keep it. I mean, she would never know, but I would know. But this is so cool. I mean, look at that old edging on there. I just love it. It's like from this exposure. So these are just some little bits of old books. Some um, I have some music pages from an old hymnal in here. Um, some like This is an old thesaurus uh, page. It's like real thin like dictionary paper. So just a variety of different papers and things. And this is actually um, some sheet music from one of my favorite junkin spots in Lebanon where I just left. I'm so sad. I miss that place so much. And um, you'll notice that most of everything has been wrapped with just some jute twine that I have. And this is what that looks like. I figured she could use the little bits that I've been wrapping it in her junk journal. Now these are some papers um, that I printed off from just a random website when I did a Google search. I have a I think I did a video for this too and I'll put a card or at least a link for that. But this is leftover from a project I did when I designed a project for May Arts a Ribbon Company. So I put those in here for her because she did mention she likes kind of some like the nautical sea stuff. These are some little bits of um, just basically pamphlets and things like that from the, the town I live in now, which is in Deland, Florida. So this is kind of a really cool postcard. Um, this is from the store that I actually bought some of the, or I, well, not bought, but where I picked up some of these free pamphlets. Just kind of some downtown Deland stuff. There's like little bits of some really cool art pieces in here. So I wanted to include something from where I currently reside for her. And this little stack over here, this, these are just some gold vintage paper that I picked up. Um, just you can see it's really cool. You can use this kind of stuff for photo mats, whatever. These are some coffee filter wreaths left over from a project I did that are tea stained. This is just a little snippet of some fabric book cover material. 
and let's see this one's a little bit bigger let me try to grab this out here so this here is just kind of a variety of some real deal vintage ephemera and i wrote that on there so she would know again it's more papers these are some old manila file folders this is some old ledger paper from a school estate or auction i went to these are some um, older rub-ons that you are fantastic to use for texture things like that just some old packaging and then i have some canvas right here from an old art journal i found this black paper this is from an old photograph album i picked up at um i don't know where i go to so many different estate sales same thing here i had to cut these down unfortunately because these are like 14 by 18 and that i needed to fit in the box so that's just kind of a little hint as to where you can kind of pick up items like that these are some old record sleeves from an old photo album that i picked up and i just popped a few out so i could share those with her she could use those as pages obviously and then these are um, from a magazine that i or excuse me a book i picked up um, recently and I'm um, trying to clip these back together and the reason I grabbed this these are so cool to me because these are from taken from really prestigious homes like on the East Coast like in you know, upper New York and that kind of thing back in the um, 50s and 40s I believe the book said somewhere in that era and these are fantastic to use because you could use these as signatures inside of like your traveler's notebook or anything thing like that I don't want to take them all apart but this is what I was my vision was you can kind of fold it in half and you have this really cool cover and you can still put all kinds of you know your word strips your date whatever you want to call your journal so that's kind of the thought process behind sharing some of these with her and then of course some larger ones back here so I will be doing a video on my channel showing you how I'm going to incorporate because I kept some out for myself that um, you can use for your traveler's notebooks and um, junk journals things like that so here are some more of the um, these are the fine the vinyl records this is the larger size I don't know the dimensions of them but I fold these in half and these are old as you can tell they um, have I picked these up from an, uh, um, an estate sale too and these are like yellowed and kind of wrinkled and I love that I think that's really cool and a few of these have the plastic in the center and then what's left in the box here is just a variety of some different papers I may not be able to get it out so I'm not to leave it in there but this top one is like some banana paper so these are all 12 by 12 papers that I had in my stash that I cut in half for her so it would fit in the box and then would kind of give her excuse me and then would kind of give her um, a little bit of real estate where she could decide to cut them down or fold them in half and have like you know a a smaller journal if she wanted to so it's just a variety of different textures of papers and you know things of that nature so that's what's down there so I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in and I'll move the box and then I'll go over with you what I have left in my little basket here it's really funny how this can really accumulate when you're gathering things for quite some time for a, a swap like this so I'm really excited about this and I hope she really enjoys everything I'm sharing. So this is just a pack, a bundle of some variety of different tags that I've made in the past. This is one where I was, um, this is a really good example of when you're using your stencils and you have the spray on top. I flipped this over onto a tag because I don't want to waste the ink and I just kept it and just dabbed on some different bits of, you know, sprays and whatnot. This is some fabric. So when I show you guys all the videos of where I pick up the different remnants of fabric, this is mostly what I do with it. I make, I cut out some different T um, tags. I either use my die cut machine or I'll hand cut if I want a specific size. You know, I tea stain. That's what these all are. These are all tea stained and I stamp on them. Same thing with these tags here. I just wanted to kind of give her some things that um, I've made in um, my crafting. So just some stamp things like that that she can use for, you know, in her junk journals. And this little bundle here, actually there's two here stuck together. This one is, these are a mix of some vintage looking papers in little bits of paper, bits of ephemera. You know, like the Seven Gypsies tags, little, you know, word strips, little envelopes, little, these are mostly some larger Project Life type of cards back here and underneath here, but they're really cool because they have like the lined pieces in there, like the, um, kind of mimicking the ledger paper. So this is just some little bits of ephemera. This is also from, not really old stuff obviously, but, um, little bits of things this is from the cracker barrel which is here on the east or the east coast um i think might be i'm not sure if they have them in the midwest or not but they're here in florida anyway virginia and stuff like that and then i have just a starbucks um tissue paper because i'm a starbucks girl so this is really cool for texture this is from let's see who's this from shabby green door it says this is these are just some fabric tickets that you can cut out and then this is just a starbucks um cup warmer or you know sleeve and then um this one here this this is actually what held up me the delay in my swap because i couldn't tell her oh i have to wait because i'm waiting for something i ordered to get here i didn't want to do that so this is a sack of some of those little flip clap those little flip top caps that i 
did a video on, or actually I did like a little quick tip or review, I think, of these little tips um, right here for your from Tim Holtz Ranger. They're to go on your little distress paints. She had mentioned that she had liked those and she had never seen them, so I wanted to give her some. So that's what's in there, and that's this little, little stamping I did on the sack just to kind of dress it up a little bit. And then in this one here, these are just some little bits and bobs of trims and different kinds of seam bindings. These are from my grandma's stash. So this is real true farm vintage stuff from my family and I wanted to share some with her Rick Rack and then I just took a piece of more of that fabric and just kind of stamped on it and just I wanted to kind of make the you know the sacks look cute I'm not quite done with these but I'm, I want to get the video done because I need to get this in the mail today so I need to put some stamping on here but these are just some little bits of um, this is just wide masking tape which isn't a big deal but you can use it down the seam I'm um, Adrian you might be interested in this part when you put it down the seam of your books and if you want to do like sprays and different liquids this prevents the page your signature pages from coming apart because it's going to protect it um, you can even use washi tape if you want but this is wider for the bigger books and then this is just what they call drywallers tape it gives some really cool texture and it's kind of tacky and it's really cool to use and in this sack here just have a stamp of you know a bobbin thread these are just some little spools that I picked up from pick your plum these just have some little bits and um, of different types of twine some of some old twine in there some is not it's from Maya Road and the twinery I believe and then this little basket here let's see I know I got so much I'm so excited I can't I hope she likes everything it's just been fun collecting I've already put this down with some washi tape but this is a glassine sack and these have some vintage buttons in it and this here is are a couple different washi strips um, samples I made for her because she mentioned these she likes the nautical kind of stuff cameras the postal and then this is like travel these two these little suitcases so I wanted to give her some samplings of some washi tapes that I have this is a little bit of some old vintage fabric this is like from my grandma like I said this is probably from the 40s or 50s I think and so I wanted to cut this little snippet to give to her she mentioned that she likes tiny strawberries well these are larger strawberries but it's strawberries on some really cool vintage fabric that um, came from my family so I thought she would enjoy that and then in this sack here, I won't pull everything out, but you can kind of peek. This is just a stamp I used from Pink Persimmon when I was on their design team. I have a um, bunch of their stamps. These um, are just some little bits of vintage sewing ephemera from my grandma's stuff that I inherited. So there's all kinds of fun things in their bindings. And this one here, this is a, um, this is actually from my, you know, um, crinkle ribbon display that I made. I actually took one of my cards off and then did some of the crinkle ribbon so I could share this with her. And these are just some different uh, crinkle ribbons that I colored specifically for her. Kind of, I had to pick, put some purple in. You guys know that. I'm a purple girl. But I kind of really wanted to stay with the darker, kind of more grungy, kind of um, junk journal-y tones, I guess you could try to say. So that's kind of why they're a little bit dark like that. That's just kind of the look I was kind of um, going for and going based off of what um, she had told me she likes. In this one here, I don't have it stamped yet, but these are just some little bits of metal pieces and I'll pour out just a little bit so you can kind of get an idea of what I have in here. Just like some keys and just some bits of metal ephemera, things like that. And those leaves right here, these are like glass leaves and I put like some little paper clips and stuff. So I thought she might want to use some, some of these items in this sack for charms and that kind of thing on the spines of her dark journals. And I think the last thing I have, I think that's everything, is this here. This is just a little gift from me to her. This is some really wonderful smelling coconut hand lotion that's made here in Florida. So I wanted to really give her something that's from my new area, my new home state. And um, of course I had corporate purple because that's my color. So that's my um, swap items for her. And again, the reason I shared all this was to kind of give, um, you know, Adrian over at Pretty Pistol 14 and other um, viewers and crafters who've asked before on my Instagram posts or I've seen their questions and things like that on other people's videos or my other social media sites, that these are some of the items that you can um, incorporate for a junk journal. You don't have to have necessarily, if you, you don't have access to, um, you know, go into state sales or junk shops or Goodwills or whatever, and which is where I find a lot of these really true old vintage things, as well as some things from my family, you don't always have to do that. You can always use items that are new. I mean, these are just pictures I just Googled. Let's see, I did this project, I think three years ago. I think I just Googled vintage nautical photos or something like that, and it brought up all these really cool maps. And the fun thing about this is you can size these 
as much as you want, you know, whatever size you want. And that's all I did. I just printed these off on just regular old copy paper. And you have some really cool images that you can use for your projects, for your junk journals. And, you know, just go to like um, garage sales or libraries when they get rid of their books and stuff. You know, book pages are awesome to use for junk journals, all kinds of things. So you can really incorporate um, new items as well as old items into your junk journal. It can be whatever your interpretation is. So I hope you ladies enjoyed this video. And Adrian, please feel free to um, private message me, send me an email, comment, whatever, if you have any other questions. But I really do encourage you to go check out um, Crafty Come Lately's channel because she has a ton of junk journal videos, more than I have actually. I don't think I have that many because typically when I make mine, I just kind of really don't film them because I don't know, I just never really have before, but I'm starting to do that now. So, but she really has a ton on there. And again, you can also just pick up papers from the craft store, you know, like Hobby Lobby and when they have their buy one, get one free, you know, um, or buy one, um, or the half, excuse me, I'm saying it wrong. These papers I got when they did the um, half price of their paper pads and different stacks and stuff. So you can find all really cool paper pads that have, you know, old images on it. If this is the vibe you want, again, you can, it can be your own interpretation. Your junk journal could be all, you know, primary bright colors. It could be shabby chic. It could be, you know, um, I don't know, whatever kind of a theme you want. It's it's your junk journal. You make it what you want it to be. But this is kind of the vibe of what I feel Crafty Come Lately is uh, wanting and what she does. And it's really the same vein of what I like to do. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. Happy crafting, happy planning, happy scrapping. And for the purpose of this video, happy junk journaling. And I'll see you next time. Bye.